Hi, I'm Bruno Senna. You're listening to Downforce Radio. Downforce Radio, live. Welcome back to the Autosport International and the Dan Weldon Karting Trophy. We had to go off the air for a short while thanks to a race stoppage. Fortunately, uh, things are back to normal once again and the race has kicked off in normal proceedings once more. And I can tell you at this point, with an hour and four minutes left in the proceedings. It is still Vincenzo Zaspiri racing that leads with top with one in second place. Titan one is third from Titan two. Uh, Teesside ladies and Northampton maidens are still fifth and sixth at the moment. Uh, seventh is the roadtrafficlawyer.com squad. They've moved their way up. Eighth is now the Cambridge Cobras. Ninth is Cool Team. And tenth is Bristol Bulldogs. The celebrities, by the way, have fallen to 12th position at this moment in time ahead of the Teesside Tigers and the Alzheimer team, the Weldon squad. So uh, some good battling through the proceedings at the moment, and we'll see if we can uh, have a chat with some of the drivers now that the race has uh, had a little bit more mileage in it, and we've had uh, a few more chats with a couple of the drivers uh, throughout the course of the race. Let's see how the uh, Northampton Maidens are getting on, first and foremost. They're running in sixth position at the moment, trying to see uh, who is out there on the circuit at the moment. I have a feeling that uh, at the moment it looks... Yes, of course. At the moment, it looks to be uh, one of the Northampton Maidens drivers that is uh, out there on the circuit. I'm trying to figure out which one it is because Kaylee is uh, still on the circuit. I think it must be Stephanie Walters that's out on the circuit at the moment for the Northampton Maidens. Ben Barnico just uh, having a chat away at the side of the circuit. Bobby Thompson and Craig Dolby deep in conversation. And uh, several of the drivers out there still trying to uh, uh, give a bit of motivation to the drivers out there on the circuit. It looks as though the ebb and flow of the race is starting to settle down a bit now. Not quite as crazy as it was earlier on, but uh, it's still very tight, still very tough. And it looks as though there's been a warning for the Titan 2 squad. Car number two uh, is being given a warning for contact out on the circuit. So uh, that is tough uh, as far as they are concerned. They have to accept that warning and deal with it, but they have acknowledged it at least as uh, Stephanie Walters in the Northampton Maiden squad tries to pick her way through the traffic with, uh, I believe, Josh Fielding out on the circuit at the moment. Uh, no, my apologies, Josh Fielding is not on the circuit at the moment. So uh, I have a feeling that's probably going to be Senan Fielding that's out on track at the moment because uh, Lando Norris is still there uh, at the side of the circuit uh, having, a, uh, having a drink and a chat with uh, his teammate Ben Barnico. Uh, we're looking at some of the other drivers out there on the circuit as well to see uh, who else is uh, moving through with the field. More try uh, There's a good chat between uh, two of the EKL teams, that is the uh, Bristol Bulldogs and the Bristol Bruisers, who are uh, very good at their EKL. They know what they're doing at this level. So uh, it's very interesting to see how the professional racers are getting on alongside the likes of the uh, EKL drivers who know these carts and know this type of racing very well but this is a very different uh, type of uh, surface that they are used to compared to anybody else now there's a team in the pits that are desperately trying to uh, push the cart down the circuit while changing drivers in the pits now that's not the most dynamic way of changing drivers and uh, I don't recommend it I think it was uh, Nichols who was doing that uh, trying to uh, coast the cart down the pit lane and change drivers simultaneously. It's not the best strategy I've ever seen in terms of uh, professional driver changes and in fact one of the uh, Red Bull livery drivers, not actually sponsored by Red Bull, just happens to have the uh, uh, just happens to have the overalls at their disposal to go racing with. That's the reason why uh, they're wearing Red Bull sporting gear. Receiving a look out as to uh, the action on the circuit at the moment. Where are the race leaders? coming out of the final turn I do believe now that is your lead up the number 18 Vincenzo Suspiri racing through the final turn in this gaggle of carts and uh, trying to uh, make their way up through the field the number 27 Bristol Bruisers causing uh, a bit of a headache to some of the other drivers as Senan Fielding makes a move on the inside line at the first corner trying to uh, make their way through as into the pits comes team 20 that is a driver change and that's going to be uh, very nicely timed by the look of things as the drivers uh, still trying to go for overtaking moves. That last corner seems to be very popular. As into the pits comes Team 12. They are making a driver change as well now. As uh, Senan Fielding once again trying to make a move on a back marker up the inside and not being given 
a lot of room to make that manoeuvre happen. So uh, having to uh, assert himself quite dramatically around the circuit. So uh, let's see who else we can have a chat to. Let's have a chat once again to uh, star of Coronation Street, Tony Hurst, who's watching on, uh, on the team's progress. How have things been going for the team so far, Tony? Well, they were going really well um, until I got in the cart. And then um, we suddenly started going backwards. <laughs> I don't, I don't, my, uh, my teammates, we were the quickest car out there when Aaron, the GT driver, was out on, uh, on course. So we can't blame the car, unfortunately. I'm just watching Troy, who's absolutely mullering everyone. Troy Corsa, world superbike champion, who's as good on four wheels as he is on two, by the looks of things. But um, it's just a really, there's no grip. It's on polished concrete. They're really light and finickety, and there's some really lightweight young guns, hot shots out there who like to knock you about, basically. So next time I go out, I'm just not going to be gracious and gentlemanly and um, give as good as I get, but it's, it's a learning curve for me as steep as Everest. So and I'm guessing, obviously, being a very competitive chap as you are, you'll probably have done some pre-season training oh, coming into this event. Absolutely, yeah. I only, uh, I only had half a Christmas cake. <laughs> and uh, two slices of Christmas pudding. That was my training, my fitness campaign. But I raced some. I raced Morgans uh, in the racing season on circuits, which are big, heavy front engine, very fast. But they're nothing. You, they're, they're nothing like these. This is like driving on ice. But it's great. It's a. It's it, it, it's it's a great learning curve. So I'm I'm loving it. I just need to go quicker, basically. It seems to be a lot of you TV stars getting the bug for motor racing. There's yourself. There's Kelvin Fletcher. And, of course, there's British Bake Off Sport Hollywood. You all seem to be a bit of petrol head. Yeah, there's a, the, the, there are a lot of us, and um, it's one of those things that I've always been into motor racing, but I was either always too skinned or, or too busy to ever do anything about it. I used to be a member of the British Motor Racing Marshals Club as a way to go motor racing when I was a kid because I couldn't afford to go karting. And here, I mean, you see some of these young kids here, girls and boys with their mums and dads here. The budgets are unbelievable. It's an uber, uber, uber serious game but um, so I, I, I kind of missed all that so I've come to it late and there are a lot of actors who, who love it you know we were at, Patrick Stewart was out driving with Morgan obviously Brian uh, Brian Johnson from ACDC has, has got a, a connection with Morgan so there, there are loads of us out there it's just taking that opportunity and once you start doing it the bug really bites and it's very very addictive Surely your success on Coronation Street dictates now. Surely you can afford it these days. <laughs> Anyone will tell you you can never afford motor racing. Because <laughs> whatever you've got, there's always something better and more expensive. But, yeah, it's, uh, for me, it's not about big budgets or, or, or huge aspirations. I love the fact that you, you push yourself and test yourself on the limit, wherever your limit might be. And, uh, the, you know, there's a skill of driving a car fast... But there's also your own psychology that you have to deal with. It's really fascinating. And it's, it's very like being on stage, you know. When you're on the grid, it's the same as being in the wings. Before the curtain goes up, you'd rather be anywhere else in the world. And you're thinking, why on earth am I doing this? And then the lights go out, the curtain goes up, and, and, and you know, a whole kind of series of instincts kick in, skills kick in, techniques kick in, learned behavior, think, you adjust things, you learn things as you go along. So... You know, there are a lot of crossovers in, in, in acting and driving and I, I, I hadn't anticipated the psychology of dealing with yourself in a car at speed. It's brilliant. Seems good to me that you've got the bug at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I was going to say I'm going nowhere fast, but actually I am going nowhere <laughs> fast in this race. But uh, yeah, it's great. And like I said, the, damn, the, the Weldon family, it, 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 it's, it, goes, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger every year. So next year, hopefully I'll be quicker. Excellent. Well, it's good to talk to you, Tony. Thanks very much. Excellent. Nice one, too. Cheers. Tony Hurst there, chilling out and having fun in the uh, world of the Dan Weldon Karting Trophy and having some great fun along the way. Paul Hadsley has got some... Uh, Paul Hadsley's uh, got a base of amusement. The top two are... Well, last time they went back to line, we're three tenths of a second apart. Uh, team number three is in second place. The, the Moore team, I'm not sure which Moore is in the kart at the Olympic. Team 18 is still in the lead but only by about three tenths. They're both mired in traffic now but they both just got through a huge pile of traffic and they are nose to tail. So the race has really started heating up. This is exciting stuff right at the exact moment it should be. So uh, we've got Vincenzo Suspiri racing now only 14 seconds ahead of the top with team. They are closing in. That two lap deficit that they had has now been completely eaten alive by the top with racing team. 
And uh, it's ironic because Sarah Moore is standing beside me. Sarah, you're, I think you're starting to think maybe you did pick the wrong team after all. Nah, I'm happy where I am. It's all good. <laughs> they're, they're, doing, they're doing well for, for themselves. So uh, it's a good battle at the top. Um, but uh, us maidens, we're still kind of we're battling with the other girls' team, the Teesside ladies. So uh, we're kind of on the same lap. We could possibly get into the top three if we tried hard enough, but we'll see. Excellent. Okay, thanks, Sarah. No worries. So the Titans are not too far behind either. Vincenzo Suspiri comes through, posting a time of 25.9. Top with one have had a bit of a slow lap because they've ended up in an incident, I think. I think somebody took them off on the last lap. So now they've dropped back a little bit. The gap is down. They got uh, a pit stop. That will be the reason. So top with one making a driver change. Titan one and two are two tenths of a second apart. There's a bit of an inter-team rivalry going on for third place at this point. 235 laps into the proceedings, less than an hour to go, and it's really kicking off at this point. We've got some great battles in the race. This is where it really starts to become not so much about the fun and more about the racing, because the battle has really stepped up, and Vicenza Suspiri's racing's lead is not as big as it was. We've got yellow flags and a big accident at the far side of the circuit. Barriers demolished at the inside of the circuit as well, and this one could be another red flag because we've got some uh, very nasty incidents there, but they're going to work, cleaning it up quickly. So maybe the yellow flag not going to be as bad as it was, but drivers having to slow down and back down from the challenge a little bit. So uh, that woke us all up a little bit. And it looks as though we've got uh, several teams. It looks like Lando Norris is being waved into the pit. Oh, sorry, the uh, 18 Vincenzo Suspiri racing team is calling their man, Sen and Fielding, into the pits. And here gets Lando Norris ready to go so the latest star of the msa formula lando norris gets himself ready to go and uh Sen and fielding completes his stint out onto the circuit goes ben barnico loses track position but lando norris is getting himself ready to go so they must have a very interesting strategy here as to what they're up to but uh very close quarters racing at the moment this is when the racing really does start to come into its own and we get some proper action out there on the circuit well jade is uh here once again. Let's see uh, how things are going with the team. How are they at the moment, Jade? Um, things are going quite well at the minute. Um, we're in about 18th place. I've just come in from my session after the um, red flag because of the um, timing um, thing had broken that records all the times on the transponders. But it's really good. Some of the... How are you and your gas monkeys coping at the moment? You're doing all right in terms of uh, rhythm, strategy? Yeah, we're doing quite well at the minute. Um, we've only got one more driver change and I'm... Um, I'm glad. I'm really happy with the result that we've got so far. Yeah, go on. I want to ask a question because I really want to. I'm just. I'm watching. I've been down at the by the uh, hairpin, and the uh, every lap someone moves the barrier back a bit. I want to know how much of an adventure is this track, and how much does it change a lap on lap, and how much does it change at the start of the race? Oh, the track is always changing. Every single time you come to a corner, it's always different because somebody's brushed it here and somebody's been pushed in there and it's it's really it's quite fun to be honest it's like an evolving track as you're going around it's quite challenging to separate some men from the boys and the women because i'm a girl is it becoming faster or slower though that's the trouble is it are the barriers moving away from the racing line towards racing lines is it going slower or faster in some places um the track started to get rubbered in in the general line that most people are racing on but um sometimes the barriers are way 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 out of the way of the racing line where there's grip and then sometimes it's on it and you have to quickly adjust the steering wheel mid-corner. But it's, it's, the track is just brilliant at the minute. It's always, it's slight drifting. It's, it's more drifting than carting. Does the, car, does the car take the impacts? Is the car getting better or worse? Or is it, is it designed to take these impacts from not only the barriers but other carters? Um, yeah, these carts, they're pro carts. So they're meant for endurances and they have... They're fully covered around the wheels. See, it's outdoor carts. They're, they're open wheeled, so you can't really get close to anyone, or you'll get damaged, or you'll break, or you'll bend your axle, or your stub axles, and it can be really expensive. But these these are designed to take a good a good beating. Good stuff. Fantastic. Good to get your feedback on it, Jade. Fantastic stuff. We uh, wish you well for the rest of the race. What? Sorry. We wish you well for the rest of the race. That's all. Oh, thank you very much. Sorry. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, Jade. Uh, sending a nice message to it and. Uh, the only person currently studying the timesheets with uh, trepidation at the moment is uh, Julianne Bates. You're getting really into this. <laughs> I do love carton, actually. I must admit, it's quite exciting. It's quite fun to watch tonight. 
Position in how the racing is really starting to heat up. It's a proper battle now. Yeah, and the Moors are in P2 at the moment, which is quite interesting. And Sarah's team, which is the Northampton Maidens, are currently in sixth place. So it's also not just a battle of teams, it's a battle of families going on as well, which is great fun. Excellent stuff. Well, hopefully you'll stick around till the finish and uh, we can all have a nice celebration for one of those teams at least. Oh, yeah, I'll be here till the end now. Good stuff. Thanks, Julia. Cheers, Jay. Excellent stuff. So uh, lots of very interested spectators, obviously, keeping an eye on things uh, as, the ra as the racing continues on. Let's see if we can have a word with someone we've not spoken to so far. Oh, I was going to say, let's see if we can speak to someone we haven't spoken to so far. Dan Healy, who's sporting his very nice uh, Jensen Button tribute helmet. But uh, he hasn't actually uh, got time to talk to us because he's about to get in the cart. So uh, that's that. There seems to be a bit of an interesting uh, debate going on. We almost had... Uh, uh, a bit of a scrap uh, in the pit lane. Senn and Fielding has just got himself out of the car. Let's see if we can have a, a quick word with uh, a very tired looking Senn and Fielding. It's uh, getting quite interesting out there, but not necessarily for the right reasons. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there is quite a lot of contact out. We've had a one black flag, and then uh, we've been hit off several times, but nothing seems to happen. But no, it's, I don't know, some people are getting a bit serious, but it's good fun. I'm enjoying it, to be honest. Uh, we seem really quick. I think we've got back into the lead. So uh, I'm happy. I guess nobody likes a dominant leader, eh? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that. There's a lot of quick drivers here. But some people just, they can't get back what they give out. <laughs> Fair play. Well, obviously, the guys are obviously doing a good job. And Lando is going to be uh, sorting himself out towards the end of this race as well. We've got a lot of faith in this boy. Yeah, I don't think we've got to worry about Lando at all. Like... He's obviously got the weight advantage, but as a driver, he's a very talented young kid. He won a world championship at only 15 against drivers that are 20-odd with much more experience than him. So, uh, no, I'm happy that we've managed to get him on our team, and he's a great lad to have on our team. Great stuff. And, of course, we've got a 2015 campaign of your own to look after because uh, it looks like you'll have a busy year this year as well. Uh, definitely. We've not got anything confirmed just quite yet, but we've just got to... Uh, keep our eyes open really uh, open to any suggestions I'm just hoping some guy will come and give me a checkbook with like 250,000 or something to pay for my racing but uh, no I'm looking forward to 2015 I think there might be a few new adventures uh, we might be taking the move into GTs so uh, I'm really looking forward to that and I think it'll be a great challenge let's be fair what team in motor racing wouldn't want to hire a driver who can win three BRDC F4 races in one weekend <laughs> Oh, well, that was, uh, I'd say, a massive thanks to the team. There was uh, some great decisions made over that weekend, so but that, that was one of those perfect weekends where everything just fell into place, and we wasn't necessarily the quickest. We just played everything right at the right time. But, um, no, I, I guess I just want to make sure I make the right decision for next year, which isn't going to cost me, so we're just putting a lot of thought into it all. Excellent. Well, uh, enjoy the rest of the race, and uh, no doubt there might be a nice trophy for you at the end of it. Thank you. I hope it's keeping you all entertained. It certainly is. Thanks, Senan. Thank you very much. Good stuff. So Senan, obviously, uh, having some thrills and some spills out there on the circuit, it's definitely made things a bit more entertaining for us because we've got uh, a bit more of a race on our hands now. So uh, Vincenzo Suspiri Racing now just 11 seconds ahead of Top with one with Lando Norris at the wheel. And, uh, well, this kid is going to show people a thing or two out there because, of course, there is uh, some very skillful driving uh, to come from this boy 15 years of age and a world karting champion now it looks like we've got yellow flags out there on the circuit stationary yellow flags so it's basically a caution period with uh, safety car proceedings so uh, everybody is having to uh, now follow in single file behaving themselves Lando Norris is uh, keeping himself very much in position as the drivers filter their way through in single file and the race is uh, going to get itself restarted fairly shortly in fact, it has already got itself restarted. But uh, lots of caution periods, lots of drama in this race, Scott. And now we've got ourselves a real race on our hands with that two-lap lead that Vincenzo Suspiri Racing had earlier on now gone. Yeah, we saw the uh, advantage that Topwith had last year when they were trying to call out towards the front. But again, they got caught at the end. Now it's roll reversal. Now that the safety car, safety car period, yet the, the yellow flag period is over. Now Vincenzo Suspiri Racing have got to really put their foot down to try and push forward. Top with the situation last year, they were battling through the lead. They lost it with a few minutes to go. As I said, now the tables have turned. They're not the hunt hunted, they're the hunters at this point in time. Then again, looking at the lap times that that team has put in in the lead, Vincenzo Suspiri Racing, the team of drivers he's put together with all the kind of BRDC guys, 
then those statues, as, uh, otherwise they wouldn't have been the Order Sport Award, Awards um, nominees. So the task is tough. But if any team's up to it, I think Topman certainly are, especially with the calibre of drivers they've got. Well, thanks to that safety car period, the gap between the two teams is now down to just a few seconds. In fact, the gap is 9.2 seconds after that uh, last lap. But Nando Norris is on it. He's just done a 25.6 second lap compared to Tockwith on a 29.4. So they're definitely gaining ground again, our Vincenzo Suspiri racing, out in front of the rest of the field. Lando Norris is flying around this circuit. 15 years of age, world karting champion, and that's definitely a real secret weapon in the arsenal for VSR. They're looking very strong out in front again. They're getting frustrated, the drivers on the sidelines, because they had such a strong lead earlier on. But now they've got a real hard work ahead of them because Topwith know their form. They know how things are going through the course of the race. And they've done this before. They know how to build up the lead. But Lando Norris is working hard. 26-0 on the last lap from Lando Norris compared to Topwith 1, who did a 26-3. The gap is up to 11.9. Lando Norris is on it. He is building up that advantage once more. And it is steadily, steadily increasing the gap. So Lando Norris is on it once more. And, uh, well, here we go. Uh, we've got uh, the man who gave them a bit of a wrist slap earlier on, Bob Pope, the man who's running the event. Bob, great to see so much enthusiasm for this event right from the word go. Uh, it's 25 years since we run our first one. It's just tiring me out. They've got so much enthusiasm. Remember, I'm 60. They're killing me. <laughs> it's great to see you in the headmaster role a few times today. Oh, no, I'm, I've always been the bad boy, but try to keep under control. Look, no one's been injured. We've had no broken carts. We've had a few barriers on slippery surface like that. 30 carts on a 25-second lap. It just happens. And why wouldn't you tell off professional racing drivers if you could get the chance? Tell them off. I'll tell them to behave themselves because I will beat them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Brilliant stuff. So Bob Pope telling it like it is in uh, fine form but the gap again is increasing as Lando Norris sets another strong lap but Topwith has responded with a faster lap this time 26-0 compared to a 26-2 now Suspiri Racing has had a bad lap 28-7 on that last lap Topwith 1 coming back and it's a 25-9-3 so that is really strong from Topwith now the gap is on again Lando Norris getting held up on that last lap to the tune of 3 seconds so the gap comes down to 9.9 seconds Top with one are responding. They're getting back into this. It is very tight indeed. And there's battling through the final turn. There's contact. And there's a yellow flag incident. Two or three cards involved. And a barrier has been taken off the circuit as well. Now we're getting some drama in the Dan Weldon Karting Trophy. It's action all the way. And this is really starting to get a little bit dangerous in that final corner with a couple of barriers dislodged. Wave yellow flags at the final turn. Yeah, drivers all warn now that uh, if they do smash into the barriers or severely uh, uh, disconfigure the, uh, the, the, the track, then they will red flag the race. Everybody will be talked to, as has happened a couple of times already. And there are several drivers in the final turn who didn't see the yellow flag waving on the inside line until the last minute. And so there was loading coming into that final corner with one, two, three, four, five carts smashing into each other at the back because they didn't see the cart, uh, the yellow flag in front until it was too late. And there's a concertina effect with carts bashing each other in the back. One, two, three, four, and five in a line. The drivers are obviously working so hard to race out there. They're not spotting the yellow flags until it's too late. So with Vincenzo Suspiri racing, they've just done a great last lap, 25-5. And top with one on, they've managed to open the gap up again. So Lando Norris is getting straight back on with it. So uh, great stuff so far from them. They're really starting to work this uh, passage once more. Well, the only driver really in the Vincenzo Suspiri racing team we haven't spoken to is Josh Fielding. And obviously he's been out there earlier on in the lap. Let's see if we can have a word with Josh. You had uh, some fun and games out there, but it's uh, not quite as fun as perhaps uh, you might have liked it to have been. It was definitely fantastic out there. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit different in the, in the uh, pro car industry as to how we're used to. But no, it's absolutely great fun. It really is. It's nice to see that the uh, professional young guns of the future have recognised they need to bring a guy with some stones who can actually handle himself out there to uh, help the team move forward. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, at the minute, I'm not racing anymore, which is unfortunate, but I've got a younger brother and the competitiveness never leaves the blood, really. It's, uh, it's a bit of a strong one. <laughs> so which of the two of you is proving to be the faster at the moment? Because it's quite close out there between the drivers. 
Yeah, De Senon's definitely got the, the upper hand, I think, being most recently kart experienced. Uh, he's doing well, he's got the fastest lap. Uh, unfortunately, I'm only about half a second off, but still, getting there. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully there's a victory in it for you later on, but uh, who's going to take the finish line? Do we know that yet, or are we keeping that to ourselves? Oh, uh, secret. Yeah, I can't tell you. We'll reveal it in the last five minutes. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Josh. Cheers. So there we go then, keeping the cards close to the chest, that's what we like. A competitive spirit of racing is very much alive and kicking here as the uh, Bristol Bulldogs and the Bristol Bruisers keeping an eye on the timing screens. Oh, more contact, more contact on the circuit and there's more barriers going away while there's more incidents out there on the circuit and this is getting farcical now. Too many drivers coming too close to the barriers and several incidents now and it looks as though we're going to get a red flag out there on the circuit. The drivers are really starting to get a little bit wayward on the circuit. Drivers are being called into the pits. More spins, more drivers facing the wrong way. It's getting a little bit chaotic out there at the moment as drivers are being called in for driver changes. It's all very, very close indeed as out onto the circuit goes Sarah Moore for her stint in the uh, Northampton Maidens car. They need to get this race sorted out, really, because there are drivers still causing incidents out there on the circuit, going for gaps that simply do not exist. So drivers are going to need to tone down their act a little bit. Otherwise, there will be more red flags, and there will be more uh, telling off from the headmaster, Bob Pope. So that's something that they're going to need to watch out for, because you do not cross Bob Pope. He will give it out as good as the drivers are currently getting at the moment. So uh, more drivers out there sorting a little bit of an issue out there with uh, RG Bargy. They need to sort themselves out a little bit before the end of this race. Sarah Moore getting herself ready to go as uh, a couple more drivers uh, swapping over out of the car. So Owen Genman just getting out of the Titan Motorsport car. And it looks as though Steve Parrish has just extricating himself from the celebrity car. So uh, considering the team is uh, now just outside the top 10, I have a feeling that there's some explaining to do from the celebrity camp as to uh, who is uh, causing them a little bit less of a, a strong run. Well, Lando Norris is certainly not sluggish out there. He has continued to open up the gap to nearly a lap over top with one. He's managed to build up so much of an advantage that he's very nearly back in position. The Northampton Maidens are having a battle with uh, Compo of the Car Force team, and they didn't notice that their girl, Sarah Moore, is needing a driver change. Well, uh, Sarah Moore is looking to try and change over in this stage of the race because uh, we're getting to a strong point. Sarah Moore looking at the team. Come on, we need to get this uh, driver change sorted. And there's a little bit too much space. Oh, 14 car force gets shoved into a spin. And that is a very dangerous moment in the race. A couple of drivers are really starting to take things into their own hands at the moment as the Northampton Maidens rush to the car, trying not to lose too much time out there as Sarah Moore gets into the cart for Northampton Maidens and zooms off into the distance, hoping that they can bring the cart back up into the top five in the latter stages of this race. So it's really starting to get uh, interesting out there. Steffi Walters has just got out of the cart. It's getting manic out there, Steph. Oh my God, it is crazy out there. There's too many carts and not enough tracks, so it's absolutely insane. And everyone is just smashing into everyone. You can't even tell who's smashing into who because they've got free carts behind them. You've got free carts in front. It's like soup. It was looking like there were times when yellow flags were out. There was even some loading because if one guy doesn't see the yellow flag, there's a concertina effect. There's nowhere for anyone to go. Yeah, totally. There was people in front of me that were even chills trying to battle on the yellow flag. So they're smashing into each other and then they'll come around and see the yellow flag and they were just like hitting into each other and then I'd have people loading into me. So nightmare, absolute nightmare, but some good racing and some bad. Well, fortunately, now you've got Sarah Moore, who showed her skills last year. She could be the secret weapon that brings you forward now. Oh, yeah, totally. As long as she uh, no bashing, we'll be fine. We'll be clean air. I hate to tell you this, but she did kind of take out our commentator on a sim yesterday. So she's got some aggression in her at the moment. Oh, yeah, she's got bundles of aggression in her. And I've already warned her if she went on track that we're on our final warning. She can't waste it. <laughs> Fair play. Thanks, Steph. No problem. Thank you. So there we go, strategy and team talk for the Northampton Maidens. They're in the top five, and Vincenzo Suspiri Racing has lost the lead. And they've just been brought to the pit. I'm not sure if it's a black flag at all, but the lad and Norris got brought in and stopped in the pit there for about 30 seconds or so. So two, two of the drivers have gone down to, 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 go to protest it, but it seems as though he's been held because of some kind of penalty. So Tottenham now have the lead, and 
VSR not happy? I can tell you that Ben Barnico, Senan and Josh Fielding are absolutely fuming at the moment. They have no idea why Lando Norris has been held in the pits for so long. And they are hopping mad at the moment, trying to talk to the officials. What's going on here? We should be leading this race. And now Lando Norris is six tenths of a second behind top with one, battling them for the lead on track once more. That's the first time in this race that the Vincenzo Suspiri racing team has lost the lead. And everybody is absolutely fuming at VSR. Not quite sure what's going on. But Lando Norris has now got the bit between his teeth. He will be driving with the red mist, trying to get this lead back again. And if you want to cross Lando Norris, be aware, because Lando is really stepping it up. He's right on the tail of the top with one team, and they are having a race for the flag. It's Edward Moore versus Lando Norris out there, both equally great racing drivers, both equally competitive, and it is looking like a rip-roaring race right now. Fantastic stuff between these two. Ed Moore is trying to get a back marker out of the way. Gives the no he gives a shove as Lando Norris comes into the pits. Why is Lando Norris now in the pits? The, the, the marshal here, the pit marshal, is indicating a driver change. That must be another penalty. For whatever reason, he's had his black flag, and now he's indicating he must have a driver change because he's he signaled to them, put your helmet on and change, because I don't know why I didn't see the incident. Obviously, there's been lots of incidents out there, but the ma pit marshal here has indicated a driver change, and the team are not happy. So, unexplicable, but Lando Norris has been called out of the cart, and Senan Fielding has to change it over. This is a disaster for VSR. Now they have got their backs against the wall. They have got to try and make up this ground. Lando Norris and the team are not happy, but Lando Norris is getting a ticking off from Bob Pope. Ben Barnico is trying to defend Lando's honour here, but it's not looking good for the championship, for the race leaders. It is not looking good at all. Now it's up to Senan Fielding to chase down the leaders, top with one, and now second place, Titan two. The leaders throughout have dropped to third position. Scott, this is unbelievable. Bear in mind, do we not have this exactly last year? Top with were leading, Senna Field were hunting them down. It's a, it's a replay of 2014 all over again. A dodgy fix. A dodgy fix, apparently, according to family members within the team. We know it's playful banter, but, well, we really have got ourselves a grandstand finish lined up here because Senna Fielding is closing in on the Titan Motorsport second team, which are now in second place. Top with one's Edward Moore. He's 14.7 seconds ahead of second place. We have got a race on our hands. Top one must be thinking, oh no, not again. <laughs> we went through this last year, not two times in a row, but even so, it, it, it makes for fantastic racing. The fact that there's a catalyst in Titan 2, they're in second place. They're going to be the proverbial cat amongst the pigeons with this one. Let's see what kind of a defence they can put up against Senna Fuli. And then again, the way he was charging last year, we know for a fact, it ain't going to be easy. And unfortunately for Top with this time, they haven't got Sarah Moore on their team because she's a Northampton maiden this time. So... We have to see how Senan Fielding can handle the might of Titan. In fact, I think he's actually got through. Not quite. No, he's been held up on the way through. So the gap is up to eight tenths of a second again. Senan Fielding is charging hard after Titan 2. But out in front, it is Edward Moore of Top With Motorsport leading the way at the moment, thanks to some penalties or two for the Vincenzo Suspiri racing team. In fact, we can get a word with Ben Barnico, who is looking at the timing screens. Things are not going your way, and not for your own reason either. No, um, I think I think this might be a little bit of a conspiracy that the that the team that keep on getting all the keep team that keep on getting all the advantages the the family that run this uh, event. Unfortunately, it's like that because I mean Lando's just done an absolutely great job. Got us a lap in front. Someone puts him in the wall, and we get the black flag. I mean. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to point fingers, but I think anyone would be a little bit suspicious about that. And as a top racing driver, you obviously want to have fun, but you want to make sure that things go the way they should. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a massive shame because we've worked so hard. You know, we've been here for all three hours. We've sponsored the event like everyone else, and then things like that happen. And I mean, they, they, even the people out there themselves said that this event's for fun, so I don't know why they're doing things like that to our team. I think they're trying to spice up the racing a little bit, perhaps? Possibly, but... They're doing it in a bit of a dodgy way, but I mean, yeah, I mean, we've still had fun at the end of the day, but it's just a massive shame about, about this. Well, it'd be great to see you guys fight your course and come through and take the victory back again. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think the, the leaders are going to make another pit stop, so hopefully that might help us out. OK, hard luck, Ben. Keep fighting. Keep going. Thanks very much. We will do. Don't worry. Good stuff. Ben Barnico fighting on. He is not going to give up, and the team is more determined than ever now to get through to the front of this field once more. Top without in front, 
Titan 2 in second place, but now the Vincenzo Suspiri racing team is on a charge. They are determined to come back and get this lead back once more. It is not going to be easy for Top With One to hang on to this advantage. Now they've got four very determined, very feisty racing drivers trying to come through and get this lead back again. Titan 2 are in second position. The gap now between Top With One and Titan 2 is 15.1 with VSR right behind in third place. They are coming back and Josh Fielding has a word for us. They've got one Make more clean, stop. Though. They've got one more stop. That's all I'm saying. We've done all our stops. They've got one more stop left. Okay, so Senden Fielding is out there to drive to the finish and we've got 29 minutes of this race. We have got exactly half an hour to go. The tension is rising and it is really starting to step up the game. Paul Bates has joined us now as uh, an interested spectator. Obviously, Julianne and Maisie have dragged you down here and we've got some entertaining racing to finish a half hour. Well, exactly, without a doubt. I was quite comfortable in the bar, but I got dragged down here to give him a lift. I thought, well, I might as well come in and uh, see what's going on. And like I say, nice to see Top with in the lead. A few, a few laps, but yeah, I can see it getting really tight in the next half an hour. But it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet, and I think I'll probably stay till the end now, so my beer, my beer can wait. Excellent, they've dragged you in. Good stuff. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. So Paul Bates getting himself ready, and looks as though, hang on a moment. No, I say Lando Norris is there in pit lane, so not sure you want to go and speak to him. Yes, indeed. I think Lando Norris, we need to have a bit of a word with Lando, because he's driven absolutely brilliantly out there, and... Uh, Things have kind of worked against him beyond his control. Let's have a word with Lando. Lando, this has not gone the way it should have gone. Uh, no, but I don't know really. I just get black flagged all the time, doing nothing. So do all, of my, all, the, all the other team drivers. So, yeah, don't know really. Well, it's up to Senna now to redeem you all. But fortunately, after last year's push, you know you've got someone who can drive with a red mist. Yeah, of course. All of our drivers are really good. So, yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see and hopefully something can happen. Hard luck, Lando. You drove a cracking run out there. Thank you. Good stuff from Lando Norris. So, uh, interesting drama here at the Dan Weldon Karting Trophy. It's starting to turn out a bit like a Dan Weldon IndyCar race. There's drama written right through this. Yeah, I said it's going to go right down to the uh, the very last, what, half hour, I think we're in now. It's uh, tempers getting frayed with uh, a lot of the professional drivers and... Uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can certainly feel the air of tension. This started out as a nice, jovial, jolly karting uh, race. And it still is that for many people, of course, not forgetting why we are here. Uh, but like I said earlier also, for a lot of these drivers, this is the start of their season. I think Dan would be looking down on this right now and grinning from ear to ear because this is exactly the kind of motor racing he would have enjoyed. The drama, the tension, the atmosphere and the action. It's playing out exactly how he would have wanted it. He would have wanted a race right down to the wire. And that's exactly what we've got. Top with one, now leading Vincenzo Suspiri Racing back into second place now. They've moved up into second place past Titan 2 to get that place back again. The gap is 17 seconds, but according to our sources, Top with one still have at least one more pit stop to make. And the Vincenzo Suspiri Racing team are pushing on. They are determined to come back from this and they are charging hard. So, if anything, it only just got started. It's not done yet by any means. So, out in front, top with one, still trying to hold this advantage, but we think they've got one more pit stop to go and a 17, 18 second advantage. Senan Fielding, who drove from three laps behind last year to snatch the victory of Sarah Moore and top with, History is definitely repeating itself here as it was in 2014. It's playing out exactly the same way this year. It's going down to the wire, down to the line, and we've got 25 minutes left of racing with some cracking action to come. 25-3 from top with one, a 26 on the last lap from Vincenzo Suspiro Racing. I can't call this. It's going to go right down to the finish. Meanwhile, behind them, Titan 2 and Titan 1 are having a bit of an inter-team battle for who's going to get the third and final place. In fact, Titan 2 is now coming back at Vincenzo Suspiri Racing. They're having another challenge for second place. It's not done yet. This could end up being a three-way fight for the victory in the Dan Weldon Karting Trophy. They're really stepping up their game here and watching on is Vincenzo Suspiri himself. Obviously very intrigued with the action that uh, this race is building. It is an absolutely cracking spectacle we've got now. This is magnificent. Again, exactly how we saw last year, right down to the wire. This is really this is why this is why karting is one of the best performers of motorsport in the UK because it is so close. The racing is so tight. 
it's completely unpredictable. That's what we love in motorsport, the unpredictability about it. And again, to have almost a carbon copy situation of last year means that this event just gets better and better. And no matter what happens, the racing is always exciting and it always provides a dramatic finish, no matter what you have. From two laps ahead of the field, Vincenzo Zaspiri Racing is now having to fight back a deficit of nearly a lap to move their self back into position. And this is not going to be easy, even by Sen and Fielding standards. In fact, Titan 2 have got back into second place. They make their move, and Titan 2 are back into second position. Vincenzo Zaspiri Racing down to third place, and this is not over yet. If anything, we are just getting started. Now, Edward Moore picking his way through the traffic as Titan 2 have another go at Vincenzo Suspiri Racing and take the place back. Where are they as they come through the final turn? There they are. And it is a very close fight indeed. More drivers with arms in the air. Into the pits comes the number two, I believe. Is that Titan 2 in the pit? No, it's not. Sorry. But it looks to me as though we've got the cracking fight. Vincenzo Suspiri Racing now back in front by seven tenths of a second. So VSR have got back in the second place once more. They're swapping places lap by lap. This is magnificent. Cracking stuff now in the DWKT. We're having an absolutely awesome race of it now as Nigel Moore is getting himself ready to go. So there is that final pit stop we were talking about from top with one. It looks like they are about to make it, in which case we're going to have a three-card scrap for the victory in the Tan World and Karting Trophy. Last year was good. This year is going to be even better. I love motorsport. <laughs> That's all I've got to say on that. Can football deliver that much? No, I don't think so. Well, part of what we've been saying is the, the thing we saying goes motors, uh, motorsport because every other sport requires one ball rather than two. Absolutely. Very true indeed. Part of my language on that is a little bit too much <laughs> close to the watershed. I think Sarah Moore would have something to say about that as well. I'm sure she would. <laughs> so, great racing. Let's look at just outside the top four because the Northampton Maidens have got themselves back in a P5. And now we've got a, a massive lap from Senate Fielding. Look at that. A new fastest lap. 24.55 from Senate Fielding. He is absolutely streaking around this race circuit. A new fastest lap as he pulls away from Titan 2 on a 24.55 second lap. Vincenzo Zaspiri Racing are coming. And we're top with one, about to make their pit stop, changing David Moore for Nigel Moore. This race just got going. 22 minutes to go, and VSR are on 25-4 on that last lap, with 25-3 in comparison. Vincenzo Zaspiri Racing want this. They really, really want this. And now, Sen and Fielding, with a 24.550 lap, is throwing his weight into the mix and top with one responds with a new fastest lap for them 24 8 8 4 three tenths off Sen and fielding but this is history repeating itself last year he came back from three laps of drift to pinch it off sarah moore this year it looks like he's going to pinch it off nigel moore when he makes his pit stop so nigel moore and the top with one team sitting waiting to see if they make this pit stop They've worked so hard to get themselves into a strong position, but now it could all go awry because VSR are flying around the circuit and top with one are doing everything they can. They've been another new fastest lap in, 24.854, fastest of their personal best laps, I should say, not overall, because that is Sen and Fielding, 24.55. This is a great race once of a sudden. We have got ourselves a battle right to the death. The gap was about 17 seconds. What is the gap now? We wait for Ed Moore to come through on a 25-4. What is Vincenzo Suspiri Racing doing? We'll find out in a moment. But the gap is 26-3. It's, incre it's increasing rather than decreasing. Yeah, there are now no cars in between the third and second place uh, carts. Uh, the uh, Titan 2 just got ahead of a back marker. It is on. We've got a great battle between Versailles and Titan 2 for second. But now top with one is due in the pit one more time, we believe. So Nigel Moore, this lead of 17 seconds or so, it's going to be tough. Nigel Moore is sitting at the side of the circuit in the pits, waiting to go. It's going to be close because Nigel Moore needs to build up. A, uh, sorry, David Moore, I should say, needs to build up a bit of an advantage here with Nigel Moore about to get ready. I think Titan 2 has got past Senna and Fielding again, has he? No, not quite. Four tenths of a second in it. Three tenths of a second in it now. So Senna Fielding is really struggling to get away. 
while David Moore is trying to pick his way through the traffic here. He's made his way past one back marker. Now two is going to be in the next target. Northampton Maidens still forcing their hand as well. Bit of contact as centre fielding tries to get a move up on the inside. Trying to get away from Titan 2. This is close. This is really close. The last lap, Vincenzo Suspiri Racing still, up, uh, the gap is down to 15.5 seconds now. So VSR are coming. They are really starting to build this gap up again. I can see Gemma Moore having a bit of a, a shouting uh, spree with Maisie Bates, the daughter of Julianne Bates, championship coordinator, trying to motivate the top with motorsport team to get that gap back up. The gap is 15.5 once again. They sat almost identical lap times, seven thousandths of a second between them on that last lap. This is going to go down to the wire. And Nigel Moore sits in the pit waiting for that final change. Senan Fielding is absolutely flying around this circuit when he gets a clear track. In fact, Aaron Scott has just moved out of the way to allow him to get through. So that is a very significant moment for VSR, the celebrity team gets out of the way of Senan Fielding to give him clear track. And now we should see Senan Fielding, the fighter. Senan Fielding, the superstar. Senan Fielding, the very, very talented megastar who was an absolute euphoric addition to last year's event. And he's pushing his way forward again here. Very close stuff, very tight racing. But now, after two and a half hours, it's not an enduro anymore. Now, it's a sprint as Ed Moore watches on David Moore another new fastest lap I believe let's see 24.828 on that last lap before the last one that came through top with motorsport still doing the very best it can but it is not easy we've got a real sprint out there now surely surely now David Moore has got to consider whether another pit stop needs to come in he's leading the way as Gemma Moore once again shows uh, her colours uh, nailing them to the mast of top with one they're leading the way with half an hour to go, but have they got another pit stop to make? Into the pits. Who is that coming in? That's Team 25 making a pit stop. So we wait to see what Top With One are doing. David Moore with traffic in front of him. That is Titan One in front of him. He's got to try and get through quickly because that is going to hold him up. And Senan Fielding did have a clear track in front of him the last time we saw him. In fact, he still has. He's getting a bit of a nudge from uh, one of the other competitors, but he keeps his clear track in front. Senate Fielding still pushing on and he nods to his team I can do this, I can do this do not lose faith boys I can do this, Senate Fielding is pushing and what a fast lap that is from top with one in response, the gap is down to 16.5 but a new fastest personal best from top with one 24.6, they are closing, what an amazing run this is from top with one as David Moore sets another new personal best 24-6, really pushing on. This is so, so tense. It's going to be either one of these two teams again, like last year, but Titan 2 still with a hand to play as well. It seems as though that Topwith have been able to, are able to respond this time. It seems to be keeping the pressure on. They're still going to make that one final stop to change drivers, but even so, they're trying to put themselves into position where they can get themselves that gap. They can afford to push it on, but even so, when they do come in, it's going to be every single fraction of a second will count in terms of making that pit stop absolutely perfect. They'll be setting first best. New the fastest lap of the race, 24-2 minutes, Chenzo Sospiri Racing. Incredible. You know it's going to rubber in, but my goodness, they're flying. It's, again, it's deja vu over again. Massive lap from Senan Fielding. 24-2 from Senan Fielding. He is absolutely massacring this gap. 25-9 on the last lap from Ed Moore. Uh, from David Moore, sorry, 24-2. The gap is down to 14.7. Senan Fielding is leaving top with one with no doubt at all. They are coming. There is 15 minutes to go in this race and Senan Fielding is rocketing around this racetrack. 24-2, a new fastest stop, and there's a spin at the final turn. That's one of the cart force boys, yellow flags. Now, if that ends up being a caution period, that's going to completely destroy the deficit. David Moore does not get held up in that. He doesn't lose any time. So fortunately, that is a bit of a saving grace. 25-3 on that last lap from David Moore. What could Senan Fielding do as he comes through on the next lap? 20, 20 what? Let's see what he comes through at. 25-3, 14-3. They're still in this fight. It's really close now. 
Oh, fantastic. This is exactly the way a 2015 motor racing season should start with action right from the off. Yeah, another yellow flag out on track and uh, the uh, uh, Vincenzo uh, boys uh, frantically gesticulating to get a move on over the barriers. They really, really want this victory. The gap between second and first is gradually coming down very slowly, though. Last time out, I think it was about 14 and a half seconds. Yes, it was. It's getting closer all the time. And I can see Lando Norris, Ben Barnico and Josh Fielding. They're on tiptoes. They're gr clutching at every barrier they can get near. It's close. It's really, really close. And it's going to go right the way down to the wire again. 14 minutes to go. 24-7 for top with one. 25-0 for Vincenzo to speed racing. 13.9 the gap. This could go all the way to the line. Yellow flags out at the penultimate section of the course. And we wait to see how the boys are coping. David Moore out in front of their rival, Senna Fielding, who's in traffic at the moment. This is not good. This is not good. 25-0 on the last lap for Top with one. 25-5 for VSR. The gap's opening up. This is not good. This is not good for VSR. Oh, and there's more contact in the barrier. That's one of the car force boys. Yellow flags. The track is almost blocked. This is going to potentially be a yellow flag situation. In fact, Nigel Moore has come through and Senna Fielding got caught up in all that. Senna Fielding got held up. Oh, this is going to be a bit of a nightmare as David Moore ends up sweeping through, but he did not lose anywhere near as much time. They both went through on a 28 second lap that time through. Top with one on a 25-2 this time. So the gap should pretty much remain the same. But that barrier getting clouded, that's really added more tension to the mix. Yellow flags out on circuit at the last corner while more barrier repairs are going on. And David Moore trying to carve his way through the traffic. VSR continue to push on. Vincenzo Suspiri racing with Vincenzo watching from the sidelines. And center fielding his arm is in the air. Don't worry, boys. Don't panic. We've still got a chance at this. We've still got a chance. In fact, there is Nigel Moore standing in the pit. I wonder if they're going to choose this moment. 12.4 seconds now, the gap. David Moore is going to be in the pits, I believe, very shortly. Nigel Moore is ready for a pit stop. They're going to have to make this the fastest stop in history to try and not lose the lead. Oh, this is going to be close. More contact with Barrios on the way through. But Nigel Moore is standing in the pits, waiting for a pit stop. This is going to be close. They've got to try and get this pit stop done quickly because Nigel Moore is getting himself ready. David Moore, is he going to get himself ready for the pits? The Barriers are trying to be put back in a position. Oh, this is close. This is really, really close now. I can see Nigel Moore getting himself ready to go, but he's also moving the barriers back into the position they should be in. Oh, I can't call this one, Scott. This is close. The thing, Nigel Moore is used to being part of the VLN and Nordschleifer with uh, everything going forward. So, so we now have forwards. Looking at the lap times, Nigel Moore, of course, is used to being competing in the VLN in the Nürburgring in the Toyota GT86, of course, with his sister Sarah. This is a lot more nail bison. This is not the Nordschleifer. It is, of course, the... Like, the Karting circuit here at Autosport International. And we're going to keep an eye on the gap. 25-0 for top with last and 24.5 for VSR. So the gap is now down to eight seconds. It really is coming down. So at this point in time, it could be even so that uh, top with again are in trouble. As you said, it's just like 2014. And Nigel Moore is now back in the pit. He's kicking the barriers again. He's, he's desperate to get any kind of fight. It all goes properly once again. But the gap has come there since you lost. Sorry, Jake. It's down to now just eight seconds. So it's really come down. So either something's happened at the top of it. But even so, this is getting more and more dramatic. It really is 2014 all over again. Unbelievable scenes here at the Dan Weldon Carnick Trophy. We need to get a timing screen uh, over to the finish line because the checkered flag will obviously be on the other side of the circuit. We need to see exactly how this face is going to play out. So we're going to move ourselves to the finish line here. And uh, we'll get ourselves neatly into position to uh, see the end of this race. But it is going to be very close. There's no doubt about that because we've got two teams, possibly three teams, in with a shout of victory here. The gap down to eight seconds between David Moore and Vincenzo Suspiri racing center and fielding. 24-8 on the last lap for David Moore. 25-4. 
for VSR. The gap, 8.8 .8 seconds. It's going to be close. 10 minutes on the clock. A 10-minute sprint after two hours and 50 minutes of racing. This is absolutely incredible. We'll see how they battle their way through. In fact, there's still some bumping and boring. In fact, Senan Fielding is going to come up to some traffic in this next lap. So it's going to be very tight, very tense indeed. Northampton Maidens driver Sarah Moore is out there at the moment. And they're battling in around fifth position, trying to close up on the Titans. But a top five finish was what they wanted. The gap between VSR and Titan 2 is now 11 seconds. So they've dropped them. But now Senna Fielding trying to come past the number 10 car. They make their way through on the inside of Bernardo 10 to move up another place. We look back to see the Northampton Maidens. Sarah Moore is arm in the air. What on earth are you doing to the number 14 car force car? Get out of the way is the signal she gives. So we're going to have to look and see just how the drivers are getting on in this last 10 minutes of the race. It's going to be close. Battle for position. And Scott has news for us. No, I was just saying, Senna Fielding was caught again in traffic. A huge bunch of cars in front of him. So really wasn't making things easy for him going in, in that section there. But even so, this is getting tense. We're just we're either fixated on pit lane to see the leading car, car number three, to head into pit lane in order to make that all-final pit stop. Nigel Moore again waiting in pit lane. And this is getting more and more tense to us before. I wonder if they're going to try and leave it as late as they can. And here's a sign for a top with motorsport board is coming out. So they're thinking about it, thinking maybe when... We don't have to do one, just said they don't have to make a pit stop if they don't need to, so they're thinking about it. But David Moore is obviously going to be very, very tired out there. So Nigel Moore is ready just in case. But this race is going to be a photo finish at this rate. In fact, they've called David Moore in. They've called David Moore into the pits. This is it then. It's going to come right down to the wire. David Moore is being called in the pits. And centre fielding is trying to break the traffic. Centre fielding has got to step on it. Because David Moore is about to make a pit stop to change over to Nigel Moore. But Nigel Moore is no slouch. So this is going to come right down to the wire. Into the pits now. Comes T3. There's David Moore in the pits. This is it. Moore comes in. Stop. Nigel Moore in. He's fallen over the cart. He's fallen over the cart. And Senna Fielding takes the lead. Senna Fielding takes the lead for VSR. Unbelievable scenes here. Nigel Moore gets out of the cart. He gets into the cart. David Moore, he did his best. But now VSR are into the lead of this race with seven and a half minutes to go. It's up to Nigel Moore now. And bear in mind, Senna Fielding's been here for a long time. It's a fresh drive for Nigel Moore. He can get out there. He's pretty much there. He can do it what it was. Fielding goes past us right now. Lap 20 puts in on that case as he comes past the line now. Is a what you up there? 24-3. Flying at this. Almost like his personal best. Now we wait, of course, for, for Nigel Moore when he comes through. He is now going to come through in a second. He does a does he come through just now? 25.5, of course, in that not slow pit stop. So that's his first flying lap. He's got most of the traffic out of the way. Here comes Fielding, Fielding again through the final corner onto the least onto the pit straight. Let's see what he manages this time. That's a 24-4. Very consistent. And there is Nigel Moore just ahead of the 7 car. And Moore's time is across the 25-1. He's not, not on the same pace. Again, it's heartbreak again. If Top with don't pull, pull something out of the bag in these last 6 minutes, 40 seconds, it's going to be 2014 all over again. Final warning for cart 9 as well. That is the Barnato 9 cart. Obviously for, I guess, excessive contact. This is going to be decided and won in the traffic. It's all going to be about how Sen and Fielding and Nigel Moore pick their way through the traffic. But this is 2014 all over again. History is being repeated here. And it is absolutely sensational. Out of the final turn. And there is your leader coming through, I believe. Sen and Fielding trying to pick his way through the traffic nicely. And he comes through in a nice position. He comes through at the end of the lap. 25-5. Where is Nigel Moore? There he is at the back of a train of three carts. And the gap as he comes through, 26-7. It's not going to be good enough. Senna Fielding and Vincenzo Suspiri Racing are going to take this victory at this rate. It's going to be a cracking effort from them. But it definitely looks as though it's going to be Vincenzo Suspiri Racing side by side with the Bonato 9 squad in the Bentley livery of their overalls. But he deals with it nicely and gets out of the way. More problems. I think uh, Scott has more news for us. That's right, unless it was on the phone to me about the trophies, so not something too important. But Sam, uh, Cup is a penalty for black, of gun, black flag for cart number seven, which is the Bonato 7. So Bonato boys are getting in trouble quite a lot. Oh!
contact, number 18. That's a ball going out. That's supposed to be a warning for number 18 for VSR. That is the VSR team. So Senna Fielding is getting a warning for contact. Maybe this race isn't over yet because Nigel Moore is doing his best to close up and Senna Fielding is getting a warning for contact out there on the circuit. So it could still end up being a tough one. Here comes Senna Fielding out of the final turn in the gaggle of traffic. And the 18 is still looking good for the moment. He comes through at the end of the lap. 25-0-0-0 on the last lap. Now a 25-3. Here's Nigel Moore on his own. And he comes through to complete the lap. We'll see what the time does for him. 25-3-0-0. Slightly quicker by a few hundreds. But Senna Fielding is giving it everything he's got. Meanwhile, Titan 2 are in third place. A second behind top with one. So they might be able to snatch second place off them at this rate. Titan 2 are having a go at second place. Sarah Moore trying to pick her way through the back markers in uh, fifth position for the Northampton Maidens. They're a lap behind Titan 1. And now top with 1 are actually under threat for second place at this point. Titan 2 might be able to snatch a sneaky second place here. There go VSR once again. In fact, the number 30 uh, celebrity team is right on their tail. That's Craig Dolby. Craig Dolby is having a go at Senan Fielding, despite being a lap behind. Now Titan 2 are right on the back of top with one. The battle for second place is just getting started. A tenth of a second with four minutes to go. I don't think this one's going to be easy for them to win now because with VSR out in front by 10 seconds, they've now got a problem in Titan 2. They are coming and it's going to be very close. Here is Titan 2 right on the back. They're going to try and make a bid to get past Nigel Moore. They're sweeping all over the back of the car, trying to get through. This is fantastic. The battle is no longer for the lead. It's now for second place. But Senan Fielding is not giving up. Three minutes to go in this race. And it's looking like, despite having lost a two-lap lead, Vincenzo Zaspiri racing with, with Senan Fielding at the, wing, at the wheel. is going to do exactly what he did 12 months ago come back from the doldrums and grab the win. Yeah, but Dolby's giving Nigel Moore the massive hurry up in this uh, last few minutes of the race. I'm watching them too. They're practically glued to each other's bumpers so they head through. Moore's coming through. But look at the look at what we're seeing here. There's a massive gaggle of carts that Senna Fielding is mixed into. Even so, he's still setting competitive that time. Some 25s. Look at that one. Oh, well, that one's behind. The guys are saying 24s. So all this time that uh, Fielding is stuck behind these, these gaps here. Gaps that's a 9.5. He's not been closed, like, not closed quick enough. As they head through again, it's getting closer and closer as they come back through. And again, Nigel Moore is putting up one hell of a defensive effort because Craig Dolby trying everything he can to get through. Instead of building, no, Craig, a car, a car. no, Craig Dolby is in the 30 card, having just unlapped himself Sorry. from Vincenzo Zaspiri Racing. But the Titan 2 oh, boys, spinner, spinner, spinner. It's not, it's good. yellow flags, and the number 20 car is getting a warning for contact. That is the Dementia Friends at the back of the field, sadly. Two minutes to go. And uh, Senan Fielding actually got passed there by Craig Dolby. There he is. Dolby in the 30 actually unlapped himself while the Northampton maiden Sarah Moore is trying to battle the way through. This is the battle of a second place. Titan 2 all over the back of top with one as they battle for second place. And that's going to come right down to the line. Senan Fielding getting barged out of the way. This is not good. This is not good. Vincenzo Suspiri racing. The gap is coming down. Top with one has just done a 24-6. That's their personal best. The Senate Fielding trying to get away from a gaggle of cards. The gap has come down to less than seven seconds. And Titan 2 are in second place. Titan 2 have gone into second place. There's contact. There's barging. Top with one is down to third. But Titan 2 is into second place. And they might get a chance of winning this one. Because Senate Fielding is being held up in the VSR. He's three, he's got clear track. And it's now less than a minute to go, so that's not the major half. I don't want to put the context carefully. 55 seconds left to play, and now we've got clear track for Titan 2. This is going again, as it was before, right down to the wire. And now it's a warning for cart number eight. That's the bar to eight again for contact. But again, a few seconds left, effectively, unless something terrible goes wrong on the last side, it looks like it's going to be a two from two for VSR and for Senna Fielding. So we wait for the last lap board for the 18, as it goes past two laps to go in this race. And it is going to... Oh, the number 16's got major damage. The number 16, that's the Tova Motorsport cart. That's got major damage. The front body panel is hanging on the cart as the last lap board goes out. The last lap board goes out. And we wait for the checkered flag. 
for Vincenzo Suspiri Racing. They're going to take the checker flag as they come out of the final turn. It's going to be the 18 that gets the checker flag. Last lap, last lap to the cards out there now. And Vincenzo Suspiri Racing of Ben Barnico, Sen and Fielding, Lando Norris and Josh Fielding is going to come through the final turn to take the checkered flag. We wait for Vincenzo Suspiri Racing out of the final turn. Come the boys. They've done an amazing job. They lost it. They brought it back. It's a great win for Vincenzo Suspiri Racing and they've done it. What a win. What a win for Vincenzo Suspiri Racing. They've done it. Fantastic. Sen and Fielding fought to the finish once again. It was theirs. It was taken from them. And they've done it again. Sen and Fielding. Call that man the number one hero. He comes back from the doldrums once again and grabs them the victory. They so richly, richly deserve. It's all just a little bit of history repeating as the song goes. And that was incredible stuff, of course. The fact that they had that penalty and it looked like it was all over, but the determination from Senn and Fielding to once again fire himself through the field as he did before and to deny the likes of Titan 2 and top with again from a victory is beyond belief. It's absolutely incredible. So let's get a word then with the Mr. Team Boss himself, Vincenzo Suspiri. What an amazing race your boys put in. Fantastic. What a great win. Yeah, fantastic. They drove very well. Uh, everything was organised by Josh. He's here. Josh uh, and Senon, they helped me to organize the team and they put it together with Lando Norris and Barnicot. So it was, a, it was a very good team and thanks you for Josh to, for putting it together for me. Thank you very much. Absolutely fantastic race. Josh, you must be absolutely over the moon. What a great drive from all the boys. Oh, definitely. Definitely. It was really down to the last two, three laps where we thought, are we going to get it? Are we not going to get it? Are we going to get it? It kind of really ran both ways. We didn't know who'd done, it, the, you know, who'd done the right stops. So... Touch and go throughout the whole race. We went from having a three-lap lead to, to being behind by over a lap and bringing it back through in the last 20 minutes. It's, it's it amazing. Fantastic performance. Let's see if we can get a word with uh, Ben Barnico. Uh, ben is uh, having a word. Ben uh, is having a quick word with the TV. So let's see if we can find uh, Lando Norris. Where has Lando disappeared to? I think he's celebrating with Dad uh, somewhere on the side of the circuit. So let's see if we can... Uh, uh, I'm not sure where Lando's gone. I think he's actually having a, a bit of a moment with Papi, which is good. So uh, we'll I'll try and grab a word with him a little bit later on. Let's see if we can uh, grab one or two of the drivers from uh, Topwith while the uh, TV interviews are going on. Came so, so close at the end of that one. It was very close. But it, the final results are as follows. Vincenzo Suspiri Racing taking the victory by just 5.5 seconds from Titan 2. It was that close in the end after three hours. Top with one in third from Titan 1, Northampton Maidens, and Teesside Ladies in sixth from the Celebrity 1 team in seventh place, Bristol Bulldogs eighth, Toza Motorsport ninth, and RoadTrafficLawyer.com in tenth. What an amazing fight an absolutely cracking race and an absolutely sensational spectacle now that ladies and gentlemen that is how you start a motor racing season absolutely fantastic drive from the vsr boys they had it it was taken away and they wrestled it back absolutely magnificent display can we have every single race in 2015 like that please <laughs> that dramatic that much action Hopefully that's going to be a taste of what we've got to come. And I think actually one of the chaps who wins is actually going past right now, I think. Yeah, here's a man at the moment. We need to uh, give this boy some credit. He, but he's being called over to the TV cameras himself, actually. So uh, we need to let him go and have his moment. 15-year-old superstar, Lando Norris. That is a name that we are going to be hearing a lot in motor racing circles in years to come. And uh, he's certainly proved his might amongst the uh, rest of the drivers out there. Easily the smallest man in the entire field. But what an incredible drive. Four magnificent races in Josh Fielding, Ben Barnico, Lando Norris and Senon Fielding. They did a fantastic job. Let's get a word with Ben Barnico. Ben, that was so tense. It was looking like you were going to have it robbed away from you, but you guys know how to pull it back. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, like I said earlier, we got, we got four black flags in total. I mean, a couple of them we might have deserved, but the ones with Lando was 100%. Nothing was done wrong. So, you know, we thought it was all over. So we pushed. We, I mean, we, we, did, a, we did a good strategy. We managed to get right back, right back in the game. Senen did a great job at the end, just making sure he was nice and clean so we didn't have the same problem with the black flags, you know, because we really were being watched. You could see all the marshals staring down at us. So, yeah, we just pushed really hard, managed to, managed to get the win back in front and 
Fantastic when... stuff. Well done, Ben. Thanks, Truly ben. sensational. Thanks very much. Thank Let's you. talk to the man who brought it home. Let's talk to the man who brought it home. Absolutely terrific. Senator Fielding, I'm not sure you thought you were going to have to rewrite history like you did last year, but you'd had to do it all over again. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't actually too sure whereabouts we was at all during the race. Um, the last session, I just had loads of crazy hand signals from all these guys. I thought they were telling me to slow down. I was like, <laughs> what's going on? And uh, I had to do the last stint with only one glove on because it was that much of a quick pit stop. I didn't get time to put it on, so... Uh, no, it was a great result and uh, everyone did a great job. Everyone was really quick and uh, it wasn't just me. Everyone else was so quick out there. We was all, I think, setting the fastest lap time. So uh, great result and a good way to start the year. Fantastic. Let's talk to another man at the moment. It was all pretty much uh, sewn in the way. The drama started with you in the cart, Lando, but what an incredible performance from you boys. That must feel so sweet. Yeah, of course. Um, obviously taking the win is always sweet, but... You know, everyone's done a really good job today, um, especially standing in the last stint. He managed to get it back 10 seconds or, so, or more. So, yeah, outstanding job by everyone. Congratulations to all of you. Well done. Go celebrate. Thank you. Fantastic performance, an absolutely terrific display. And that, ladies and gentlemen, pretty much wraps things up here from the Dan Welder Karting Trophy. A fantastic way to finish the night with the four worthy drivers taking the chequered flag. It was a brilliant run from Josh Fielding, Ben Barnico, Lando Norris and the man of the moment, Senan Fielding. Vicento Suspiri Racing taking a cracking victory and uh, he seems pretty happy about it, smiling away in the background. So absolutely fantastic display. I think that's uh, a great start to the season. I think everyone, obviously, apart from Lando, has earned themselves a well-deserved drink. I think, obviously, in this case, not like a holic, obviously, <laughs> exactly. but a well-earned drink and a, celebra a celebration tonight. And of course, it, it, of course, the show's not over because, of course, we've still got one more day to go. Still got more things to announce, obviously, across the season. And of course, that's when we kick start 2015. Of course, um, if I can say it, of course, Pitbull comes back next week, and uh, from there, we start one massive year for downfall. So, if you're listening, keep tuned because you thought last year was big. It's only going to get better. Fantastic stuff. My thanks to Scott Woodwish, to Ben McPhillips, to uh, Paul Hadsley, to Lester Forbes and to Dave Goddard for helping out on the stream as well as a big thank you as well to Adrian Rickard for his insights from the American scene over the course of the weekend. A big thank you as well to the Alzheimer's Foundation and uh, Dan Weldon, uh, uh, the, the Weldon family, Holly Weldon in particular, for getting everything done together. To the Elite Karting League as well and Bob Pope and all the team for bidding in such fantastic performance. To talk with Motorsports as well for all their hard work behind the scenes of race preparation and to all of the teams that enter this magnificent event we know we've already raised at least fifty thousand pounds for the charity which is absolutely fantastic news there's more where that came from they're just giving out the trophies now to third place top with one they've done an absolutely cracking job the moors did a great job nigel edward and david and they really deserve more than third position they worked so hard led most of the last hour of the race it just didn't quite come together for them in the end but it was an absolutely cracking display nonetheless. They put so much hard work in. And for Titan 2, what a fight back for Titan 2. They really made that a very hard work. This is an endurance team that knows their craft in the world of British karting. And it's great to see Titan Motorsport take it to the professional race teams on circuits and show their might. Second place is an amazing achievement. But you cannot fault the winning team of Senan Fielding, Josh Fielding, Lando Norris and Ben Barnicote for Vincenzo Suspiri Racing. They did an absolutely cracking job and they took a well-deserved victory, having it snatched from them and fighting right back in tooth and nail to rip it from their rival's grasp. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the perfect way to start the 2015 motor racing campaign here on Downforce Radio. There's a lot more to come in the 2015 season. If you're at the Autosport Show, Join us, of course, tomorrow on the BRSCC stand, 7050. There's plenty more to come from the Autosport Show tomorrow. If you're not here able to uh, join us, then do please join us through the 2015 season. We're on a high already. Well done to VSR. Hi, I'm Bruno Senna. You're listening to Downforce Radio. Downforce Radio, live.